Marissa here, and I'm here in Port Lavaca at Bill's house, the little blue house here in Port Lavaca. And Bill is going to join me today, and we're going to go through the rule changes just as promised. So let's get started, Bill. Let's go, Marissa. All right, number one, the start dates and end dates have changed. So. Marissa, they have. We will start the contest uh, next year on January 8th, and we will finish it on June 8th. So that's about a week earlier uh, than we had in past years. And we did that so we'd have a chance to uh, have a little more access to some of the waterfowl we see in this part of Texas that time of year. Because as we move into the later part of January, we start to see those species leave. Also, the middle of June starts to get pretty hot, and wildlife activity certainly slows down, so we thought we would kind of shift everything forward a week and uh, have a chance for some different looks, certainly related to waterfowl. And also it would give us three weeks at the, at the end of the contest, after it was uh, completed, to process and submit all our photographs. We had two weeks last time and that was that was pretty tight, but this will give us another extra week to do that. You're welcome. <laughs> Number two, we have increased the territory area. Um, so. That's by several counties. And Bill, I'll let you read through all the counties since being um, your handwriting's a little iffy. No offense, people. It was very iffy. <laughs> uh, so we did increase the number of, of counties that will be eligible for the contest in 2021. Uh, increased it by 15, I think. And those are Valverde, Edwards, Real, Kerr, Bandera, uh, Gillespie, Kendall, Comal, Guadalupe, Bejar, uh, Wharton, Colorado, Fort Bend, and Brazoria. And we might be adding one more, but that is uh, up for a decision by the board. Yeah. So we'll let you know on that one. Yeah, we've had a request to, to add one more uh, county. It, that's, that's, that is, uh, it falls right in with yeah, these, it so it, it, we'll see what happens. We're hopeful. And we, we did that for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, it would allow to increase participation, adding those 15 counties. There are other, other photographers there that would be eligible uh, for, the, for the contest in 2021. But also because we will see a little bit different flora and fauna as a result of that, particularly as we go north and west in Texas. You know, we should pick up some scrub jays, for example, out of uh, Kerr County, uh, maybe Bandera County as well. We don't, I don't think we've ever seen one in a contest before. And then Matagorda County, uh, sort of eastward into the counties we've added, particularly Brazoria, we think there's a good chance that we'll see more, uh, a, a different set of migratory species in the spring. That's a very rich area for migratory birds, uh, you know, in that April, that month of April. So a couple of good reasons, I think, and, and we're certainly looking forward to see some new participants from those counties. And then we have the third one, which has the 100 entries and 45 categories. Yeah, we, we were 47 categories in the contest um, in 2019, and you could enter uh, three photographs per category. And my math, uh, I think, tells me that's 141 images. Now, that's a that's a lot of submissions for anyone. I think John Foster and I last year, last contest rather, submitted just over 100. Plus, trying to to judge that many images is really a chore for the judges. And so we thought it would be wise to go back to. 100 total entries per individual or team, and as many as three entries per category. And uh, the uh, and the board agreed with that, so we've implemented that that change. It took us back to the 100 entries that we had in years past. Then, photo traps they must be attended. They must be attended. Now, photo traps are a really glorified or high tech, but not glorified high tech uh, game cameras. The way it works, there's generally a receiver of some sort and a laser beam that's fired to that receiver. And when that laser beam is broken, typically by an animal moving through it, birds, for example, it triggers the camera. And they you get some phenomenally great photographs with it, particularly photographs, for example, of uh, barn owls coming out of a barn at night, which you really couldn't get any other way. But the rules in the past had allowed that you could set up photo traps and it didn't have to be attended so you can set up as many as you want which is in effect adding several new shooters uh, and not having to pay entry fees for them and to get photos that you weren't really in attendance for when they were taken so 
we thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and allow photo traps to still be used because again they can produce some phenomenal photographs but you have to be there at the time the photo is taken. In other words, you can't set it up and leave. You can set it up, but you can't have to stay with it uh, until you decide that you don't want to shoot anymore that day. Yes. Then, uh, we need to define the, ge the gently restrained yeah. situation. So we, in looking at the contest from previous years, and you still will be able to, the contest rules said that you could gently restrain uh, reptiles and insects for uh, taking the photographs of them. But we felt like that we needed to be more specific in what in defining what gently restrained meant. Uh, you know, first and foremost, the wildlife and focus contest is about conservation and protecting the animals that we're that we're going to be photographing. And so we thought it would be good to make it clear that we could, you could not move an animal, a reptile or an insect, to an area which might result in their body temperature being being lowered, or you couldn't confine them completely. And that really is just a matter of making sure that we, that folks understand, that all the photographers understand that our principal goal is to protect those animals even when we're talking to them, when we are photographing them. I get that right. Now, number six is probably the most controversial that we have, which is the 50% cropping rule. But Bill can explain why we chose to do it this way. Yeah, when you think back, uh, I don't know if it's controversial, but it certainly raised some eyebrows. That's true. <laughs> when you think back to the early days of the contest, when it was shot on film, everybody was on a level playing ground in terms of, of the size of the image. But as, as the cameras have, have improved, and they are, the gear now is just phenomenal. Cameras with 45 and 60 megapixels, you can cut uh, a huge amount out of an image and still have one that's large enough for you to make an acceptable print size. I, for example, in the last contest, I didn't even realize it, but going back and looking, I had a photo that I cropped 65% of the pixels out and it still was large enough for submission. And so, that, that sort of technological move in photography, we kind of feel like, and the board, I think, feels like, has moved us away from the art part of the photography as well, so that we need to, to inject more of the of art back into the to the wildlife, wildlife and focus contest as opposed to being strictly documentary. And the historic structure of it, which I think was super, I've enjoyed it every time I've done it, was that it would be just the name, the nature of the structure, let me try this again, the nature and structure of the category was such that it really drove photography toward a more documentary style. Nothing wrong with that. I would suggest that the photos that have been collected over the years in the Wildlife and Focus Contest probably represent the best documentation of the flora and fauna of Texas that, that exists anywhere. But the, I think the board realized that the contest needed to see a change in, in how the, the final product looked, the book looked, so that there was more of an artistic leaning to it. And so we have, um, one of the things we did was to put a 50% crop on it, limitation so that you can't use a 60 megapixel camera and take 15% of it and submit that, that image. That, that's more being technical than being a photographer, I think. And um, I, I think it's going to change, that, that alone is going to change the, the nature of, of the, uh, the contest some. Uh, it's also going to allow folks who may not have the really uh, pixel intense cameras and the big long lenses to have a shot to, to be successful in the contest as well. Right now, uh, it's just the nature of the structure of it kind of leans it to being more technical than artistic and, and the board's direction to the rules committee was to find ways to see if we could nudge that a little bit more to the artistic side. And we think this is a big step in going forward. Now we, we have put together a video we're just about finished with which we're going to make available to all the photographers which will explain very easily how you can use Lightroom or another uh, image processing software to know exactly what a 50% 50, 50 crop is going to look like based upon the crop ratio you decide to use. And then the category changes where we've made them a little bit more artistic. Bill, can you explain a little bit on that aspect? Again, it goes back to the, to the board's direction to the rules committee that we want to make the book look, look a little more artistic. And the, as the cameras get better again, the, the look becomes more and more technical. So we've added some categories which will be entirely dependent upon the skill of the photographer and not the, the technical muscle of the, of the uh, camera equipment. Uh, I think a real good example is we've added a, a no-crop, we call it full-frame uh, category, where 
the images submitted have to be the, the original images. They can't can be no cropping to that, which means that uh, if you're shooting a, a, a landscape, for example, that you're going to have to make sure that that the horizon is perfectly flat in that image because as soon as you use the software to straighten the, the horizon, you're going to have to crop part of it. So we think that and a couple of other categories, we've dropped from 47 to 45. We think that's going to, again, sort of move that uh, the look of the book to a more artistic uh, viewpoint. And also, it's going to level the playing field a little bit because you'll be able to make, you have a chance to do very well in some categories with just very simple uh, cameras and lenses. So, with no further ado, I think that those are the, the most important changes that we've made. Um, and thank you for going over those with us, Bill. You bet. Um, again, this isn't just something that to make it more artistic that you're going to be able to put it in Photoshop and change the look of the image with your Photoshop. This is going to take some, some skill. It's going to take some thinking on your part as the photographer. And... Um, you know, I, th I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I do too. I think that it's going to... Ray Gar is a good friend of mine. Um, we're talking about this, and he said, you know, Bill, this is... I really like this. He said, this because it's going to force me to be more creative. And I think we will all experience that, and I think the book will, will be a better final product as a result of it. So we have to give a big shout-out to the, to the board of directors or, of the Wildlife and Focus Contest for directing us to... Uh, Take this, take on this strategy, and we think it's going to be a success. Okay, you try again. We think it's going to be a successful one. Yes. That's, sorry, what am I playing? And we are at the beach. We are at the beach. So we've got people driving by, waving at us because everybody's friendly at the beach. So with, that's with that, it. keep on clicking. See y'all.